of the International Secret Police. Hello. 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 from a tribe of cannibals in the part of the Belgian Congo known as the Hunger Country, the secret police fly onto Lake Kivu, where the octopus has taken his death ray machine. Meantime, that criminal has sent his spies into the jungle, dressed in gorilla skins, to capture the secret police when they land in that territory. We find the octopus himself on the platform which holds the sinister death ray machine. He is just ending his experiments of its effects on the gorillas. <laughs> well, Zabouz, what do you think of my death ray now? It is a great and terrible weapon, Octopus Master. It destroyed the giant gorillas as easily as it destroyed the bearer antelope and monkey. Yes, Zabouz, I have succeeded in perfecting it at last. Now I am indeed master of the world. But the ray has destroyed all vegetation and jungle growth it has touched on. If the secret police see that, will they not become suspicious? By the time they see that, they will be prisoners of my gorilla men, Zabouz. Ah, how I'm going to enjoy seeing Clint Barlow's face when I tell him what I'm going to do with my death ray. Tell him my plan of world conquest while he is bound, helpless, waiting its deadly touch. You will allow him to see you, Master? I have faced him before, always, Master. Yes, but now you You mean because I am crippled, a prisoner in this wheelchair? All the more reason for Barlow to see me thus before he dies. He is the cause of this. But I shall rule the world in spite of it. Yes, master. Marlow and the others should be here soon. If my gorilla guards are successful in capturing them, and they will be. Supposing the guards meet other gorillas, will they not be in great danger? No. The natives I have picked are experienced in imitating gorillas. They have worked for museum expeditions. They've gone right into the midst of a family of gorillas and killed the one they were after without being discovered by the other beasts. When they don the skin of a gorilla... They cannot be told from the original. And thus, disguised, they will be able to get very close to the secret police without arousing their suspicion. Yes, Sabu. <laughs> I would like to see their faces when they find themselves the prisoners of gorillas. <laughs> but now, let us go back and prepare for their coming. You had better land on that level piece of ground ahead, Clint. If you get any closer to Lake Kivu, the octopus will hear our motors. Hey, well, Carlos. That looks like as good a landing field as any. I'll cut down there. I'll tell Speed and Barney, meanwhile. All right, you do that. Tell them to be ready to start into the jungle the minute we land. Here comes Carlos now, Barney. Must be getting near Lake Kivu. We are, Speed. Flint is getting ready to land. Well, we got everything packed for our walking tour. Guns, Barney? Sure, but wait a minute. Just in case we run into trouble with them gorillas... What sort of guns do we need for them? 475. But I hope we do not have to use them. Here are supplies, canteens of water, and everything else we might need, Carlos. We didn't pack any more than we absolutely needed. Ah, uh, that is right, Street, since we must carry everything on our back. I suppose we won't be finding any friendly natives to act as porters in this part of the country. Oh, Barney, we will not be passing any villages, and that is the only place I would want to pick up porters. Otherwise, we might be hiring cannibals or headhunters. Oh, well, I'll pack my own stuff, thanks. Quick landing, fellas. Nice three-point landing, too. Oh, 
Okay, boys. Let's pile out and get started. We got everything ready? Yeah, Clint. Including these big 475 guns in case of an argument with a gorilla. Yeah, we're after bigger game than gorillas. Can't take any chances of being stopped by one of them. Yeah, uh, what about the portable shortwave set, Clint? I'm afraid we can't pack that along, Barney. I'd like to, but we have too much other stuff that's absolutely necessary. Such as food, water, and ammunition. Yeah, okay, let's get going. Everybody grab a pack. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, no, no. Come on, Lucky. Here, boy. He, he don't want to leave the place, Barney. I wonder why. Come here, come here, Lucky. Here he comes. Oh, block up the plane. Gonna put blocks in front of the wheels? More than that, Barney. I'd like to put up some sort of shelter for the plane to protect it from the weather and the wild animals. Ah, oh, the weather won't hurt it so much, Clint. But as for the animals, how about building a double zarab around it? That thorn fence will keep out animals and natives, I think. Will it take long, Carlos? No, there is a big thorn ticket just over there. All the fencing we need. All right, let's get started on it right away. The sooner we build it, the sooner we can start for Lake Kivu. God, it's hot in this part of the country. Not hot, kid. Hotter. And do you notice how quiet the jungle is all of a sudden? What happened to all of the animals? The jungle is not noisy all the time, Barney. And this is the hottest time of the day. They sleep. Uh-oh. There's one of them that ain't sleeping. Hey, what was that, Carlos? A gorilla. Gorilla? I didn't know they sounded like that. <laughs> How did you think they would sound strange? Oh, more fierce, I guess. <laughs> They're not as fierce as most people believe, as I've said before, Speed. You'll find that a lot of the wild stories you hear about gorillas are absolutely untrue. Most of them come from superstitious natives who believe the gorillas to be half human. Well, they certainly look it, don't they, Carlos? See, si. particularly their eyes, Clint. Very human. And another thing that links the gorilla closer to man is his heel mark. Heel mark? See, si, Speed. Only the tracks of men and gorillas show the heel mark. Gosh, I'd sure like to see one of them. You will, any time now. I'm surprised we haven't seen them before this. I don't miss them none. Ooh, it's hot. What are some of the other stories the natives tell about gorillas, Carlos? Well, there is the story of the Nandi bear or Kerit, which is supposedly half man and half gorilla. It has only one eye, which is in the middle of its forehead, and a cry that paralyzes its victims. It attacks only on moonless nights, and then from a tree where it lies in wait, reaching down for its prey with a long, hideous arm. Gosh, say, there's a moon tonight, ain't there? <laughs> yes, Grandma. <laughs> Listen, wise guy, we're in Africa now, and from what I've seen already, I'm willing to believe any story I hear. Oh, not only the blacks tell of the Nandi bear, but white men as well. They have heard its howl, they say, and have hunted for it. But well, they've never found it, huh? Not to my knowledge. Mm-hmm. I don't think we'll be bothered with it then. Get out! Hey, what's the matter, Barney? I noticed you've been limping ever since we started. Yeah, I put my boots on in such a hurry this morning that I got one of my socks twisted. And it's wearing a blister in my heel. I, I gotta stop and straighten it out. Oh, okay, but we'll go on slowly. And you can catch up with it. Won't you wait for me? <laughs> what's the matter, Barney? Are you afraid you'll see a Nandy bear? No, I'm not afraid I'll see a Nandy bear. I just thought it'd be a good idea for us all to stick together. Oh, we won't be far ahead, Barney. And one can travel faster than four. We leave Lucky with you for company. <laughs> okay, then. Go on ahead. I'll stop right here. Can't walk another step with my sock the way it is. Hey, call Lucky so he'll stay with you, Barney. All right. Here, Lucky. Here, Lucky. Come back here. Don't be too long, Barney. Not any longer than I have to be. <coughs> Boy, it feels good to sit down. You lay down there, Lucky. You're all tired out, aren't you? Tongue's hanging out a mile. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's plenty hot. But don't you worry. It ought to be cooler at Lake Kivu. Climb it anyway. Uh, hey. Boy, this boot is hard to get off. My foot must have swelled in. There it is. Boy, look at that sock. All rolled up in a ball. No wonder it hurts. Mm-hmm. Now that feels better. Lays up the boot again, and then we're off. Hey, Lucky? <coughs> Quiet! I think you found something and come back here. Hey. Hey, hey, what are you looking at? I don't see nothing where you're looking. Maybe I'd better keep that gun sort of handy. Hmm. 
Sounds like them gorillas are coming closer. I don't like this Kivu country. The jungle's too quiet. Like something's waiting to happen. Hey, hey, what's that? Hey, that came from where Lucky was looking a minute ago. Gosh, maybe it was kind of foolish to stay back here alone. Seems like I'll never get this booth laced up. But maybe that was just the wind. No, 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 couldn't be. There's no wind blowing. Hey, hey, who, who, who's there? Hmm, maybe it's some kind of little animal or maybe a bird. A gorilla. Keep, keep quiet, Lucky. Don't make him mad. Not until I get my sights on him, anyhow. He's just standing there watching me. And them eyes. Carlos was right. They sure look human. Maybe if I don't move, he'll go away. N- nice monkey. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, you don't. Stay away from me or I'll shoot. Okay, you're asking for it, big boy. Hey, Lucky, come away from me. Come back. I don't want to shoot you. Here, Lucky. Come here. I'm going to shoot. No, no. Don't shoot. Red dog away. He bites me. Don't shoot. Mercy. What do you mean, mercy? You come here. What what did you say? Red dog away. He bites. Don't shoot. I not hurt you. You not hurt. You. Clint, help. Speak, Carla! Oh, no, no. Don't call. Help! 